Greetings viewers, Eric the Car Guy here, also known as ETCG1 on this here channel. Hey, if it's your birthday, happy birthday. And today I want to give a special shout out to Mark and his son over in England. You know who you are. Let's just jump right in, shall we? Today's topic is about the used car purchase experience at the dealership. Uh, this is fresh in my mind because just last week I was at the dealership looking to purchase a 2010 F-150. It was a pretty truck, a nice truck, Canadian truck. Uh, the thing of it is, is because it was Canadian, it had quite a bit of rusty crusty underneath. In fact, what I had done on the test drive was bring it here to the shop and put it up on this uh, nice two post lift behind me and did a complete inspection on it. And in that inspection, I found quite a few things. It had an issue with a brake caliper. It, the battery was like marginal and uh, it had a couple of codes stored, no, nothing really major. Actually, the codes that were stored seemed like they were low battery voltage related. You know, just those weird codes you sometimes get when voltage gets strange. Uh, and also the spare tire wasn't uh, connected up to it. Um, oh, one of the biggest issues was the parking brake. Uh, I applied the parking brake and it worked but it wouldn't release so i had to like do a little bit of back and forth a little bit of playing with it to get it to release and i finally did get it to release however the light for the parking brake on the dashboard remained on and as a result you drive down the road and you'd hear that famous ford chime going off the whole time like beep, 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 beep. it was just uh, super annoying uh, but nothing that was life-threatening the engine ran good the transmission was good the four-wheel drive engaged in both high and low uh, you know all, all of the other critical functions oh it had a couple of other minor rust related things it has those little steps on the side of the bed to where when you step on them they're supposed to come down so you can step up into the bed well both sides weren't working because they were completely rusted up anyway i had a laundry list on this vehicle uh, but I test drove it and they let me take it for an extended test drive and everything. In fact, they let me keep it overnight and I took my family out in it. I mean, we, we lived with it. You know, it was, a, it was a big truck. It was a four-door truck. It had the super cab or whatever the heck they call that. Anyway, nice truck. And uh, for those of you that have been keeping up with my newsletters and things, I've been considering getting a, sh a truck for the shop so that I can ho tow a car trailer. And in fact, this whole truck was set up for towing. It, it had all the towing packages, it had trailer brakes on it, everything already ready to go out of the box. It was, it was set up for towing. And that's what I liked about it. Well, I was considering, I was considering going out and just purchasing some, you know, two, three thousand dollars something off of like Craigslist or the internet or something like that and just picking up basically a beater truck for the shop. But then I got to thinking about it and I realized that having a beater truck and all the other vehicles that I have, I've got my Fairmont, I've got my Vigor, I've got my Element, I've got also a minivan. That's a lot of cars to have in the fleet. So I was thinking maybe the Element would be a good uh, thing to trade or sell or whatever before I would purchase this truck because it would kind of be redundant in having the Element and a truck. Other than the, the gas mileage that I get in the Element over the, uh, the pickup truck, you know, that, that's just what I was thinking. So that's one of the reasons I went for the four-door thing, just in case, you know, aside from hauling a car trailer, I could also haul a camper, take the family camping. Sounds like fun. Anyway, that's the long and the short of, well, the long of how I got to a place where I was considering trading my uh, 2004 Honda Element in on this 2010 F-150. Well, I bring to them and present to them this laundry list of things. In fact, I sent it in an email. Uh, I was set to meet with them on a particular day. And the response I got was, and here was the other thing, I, I, was, I was really reaching here because I also went with tires, even though there was plenty of tread left on the tires. You know how tires, when they get old, sometimes get kind of hard and the traction's not so good. Well, I noticed that when testing the four-wheel drive, that yes, the four-wheel drive did work, but the traction wasn't so great. But the tires had plenty of tread left on them, but they just weren't sticky. And I was saying, well, you know, let's see what I can do here. So I threw tires into the mix, which they took right off the top and said, no, we're not going to put tires on this. And I get it. And I, you know, but still, these are things that I have to address. And for me, repairs aren't necessarily a bad thing because what do I do for a living but make videos about fixing stuff? And there's one or two F-150s out there that uh, people could probably benefit from the information. It's one of the reasons I was choosing it. That being said, okay, so I go in there, I give them the laundry list, they look it over, they say, okay, we'll, we'll take care of some stuff. We'll, we'll take care of, you know, obviously, like I said, not the tires. And, We'll get back to you. So I let a couple of days go by. I go back. I pick up the truck. I, I, I'm ready to trade the truck in. I've got everything cleaned out of my element. I've got the title in hand. I've got the cash that I'm putting down on top of that. I am ready 
to do this deal, ready to sign my name. I get there and I start looking the truck over. One of the first things I did was open the hood, still the same old battery. And that, that was a real concern of mine because, I mean, come on, a battery. And batteries are kind of expensive. So I'm like, okay, well, they did mount the spare tire where it needed to be, and they fixed, there was also some issues with some of the lights. Some of the lights were out that they, they took care of. So they, they did those things. But as far as the issue with the brakes, I put the parking brake on, and immediately when I released it, the lights stayed on. <laughs> and I wasn't sure, sure about that right front caliper that might be sticking. I mean, this stuff adds up. I, I could probably add it up, and it probably would have been about 800, 1,000 bucks worth of repairs, if not more by the time I was done. Oh, and the AC didn't work. Now I realize it's the middle of winter and it's hard to check AC, but you can at least check to see if it turns on. Well, it wasn't turning on and I blipped the, one of the valves and I could, I could just tell that it was low on a charge. So if this thing's got an evaporator leak, what am I looking at, you know, as far as something like that? It's, it would be a serious undertaking, you know? You remember the Vigor when I did it and that. Well, the Ford was the same way. I'm pretty sure I'd be taking the dashboard out of it. All that said, I, I knew that I was up for some work. But I did my due diligence to, to see what I was getting into before I made the purchase, before I signed my name. Because my element, there's nothing wrong with it other than it needs a windshield. That's it. I drive it without worry. It's, it's good on gas. It's hard to give that vehicle up. Bottom line, it's hard to give that vehicle up. So if I'm going to give it up, I want to make sure that I'm getting something back. Once again, long story long, they didn't really address my concerns. And in a way, it kind of felt like a slap in the face. And I took it out for a final test drive before I was going to do the deal. And the entire time I'm on the test drive, I'm thinking, they just didn't give a crap. And when I say they, I'm talking about the service department or the sales department It said, anything you can fix for nothing, go ahead and fix it. I've talked about this in flipping cars before. And basically a car dealership, particularly a used car dealership, is flipping cars. That's what they do for a living. So they know they, know they make their money when they, when they bring it in. In fact, they only offered me 4,500 for my element. And I'm pretty sure that that can be somewhere in the 55, six range, you know. As, as far as what that's worth. So I know that they would make money on that. Uh, and I could have sold it outright. In fact, as soon as I mentioned that, they came back with a better interest rate. So that, that was kind of nice. But, but once again, it was just like, when all was said and done, it still had a lot of the major issues. And they, they pretty much, it, it was like I went and ordered some food. And they brought it to me, and it wasn't really to my liking. So I sent the plate of food back and it's like they stuck it in the microwave for a couple minutes and gave it back to me and said, here you go, same plate of food. It wasn't very appetizing. So I walked away. I walked away from the deal. And I really liked the salesman. The salesman wasn't being a jerk and the sales manager was doing his job at a dealership, which is to make money. There are people that they have to answer to and they say, at the end of the month, where's our money? <laughs> Seriously, no joke. So there's a, there's a lot of things that go on at dealerships to basically keep the lights on, so to speak. And we've talked about that in other videos. But, but my point is, it was a deal that I couldn't make. And I, I didn't feel the least bit bad about walking away from it. And that's, that I think is, is a good thing because a part of me felt sorry for the salesman. I, I, I found myself doing this. I'm like, you know what? It's like the end of the, here's the other thing. If you're going to buy a used car or you're going to buy a car, go at the end of the month. They all want to cash out at the end of the month. In fact, not all salesmen, but many salesmen get paid on what's called a draw. So they get paid like a paycheck. But the thing of it is, is they have to make that paycheck back in commissions. So they have to make their sales in order to basically make their paycheck. They still get the steady check, so there aren't the bumps in the road that you get with the ups and downs. But on the other side of it, they have to pay that money back. So particularly at the end of the month, they're gonna square up and find out what they still owe or don't owe or anything like that. So salesmen are highly motivated at the end of the month to move product. Just saying, the other thing I noticed was on the oil sticker of this truck, uh, it was dated back in July. And any piece of inventory that's sitting on the lot for more than three months is something they're very motivated to get rid of. So there's a couple of tips for you you might be able to, to take and use for yourself from this video, aside from my long story. Like I said, they were motivated to sell and it came down to the, the last minute and I came back and I'm just like, you know what, I'm not feeling it. I don't feel it. It's not giving me the fizz, as James May would say. Like I said, I really liked the truck. I thought it was a pretty truck. I could see myself driving that truck. I was imagining it. I'd spent the whole night before, you know, going there. But then when I got there and saw all that stuff, that reheated plate of truck, <laughs> it, uh, it wasn't very appetizing and I walked away.
And I don't feel the least bit bad about that. But you know, what I was about to say was there was a part of me that was feeling sorry for the salesman saying, you know, I'll, I'll just go through and do this deal so that you know, he can get his commission and everything. And then I thought to myself, well, hang on a second. I'm going to be signing on the dotted line for the next 48 months, paying out every month to have this vehicle. Is it worth it? Is this something that is worth this? Is it worth giving up my element for? It was really what it came down to. And I kept thinking, there's nothing wrong with that element. Nothing wrong with that element. You can put a windshield in that, and you'll be done. You can do that in the spring when it gets warm. But you're going to inherit a bunch of problems with this, with this truck. Not to mention, it's going to basically eat its weight in gas every time you go somewhere. <laughs> yeah, that was a tough one. But I hope there have been some little tidbits in this, there, in this for you. As far as where I am now, and where I am now is a week past this whole experience, I'm sort of going back to the beater truck idea. I'm like, so what if I keep the element and I have the beater truck? Like I said, I mean, I'm, I'm, I make a living by making repair videos. So if I buy a broken truck and fix the truck on camera, well, okay, <laughs> there we go. We got a show, yay. I'm sort of back to that line of thinking, but I'm, a, I'm in good terms with the salespeople there. I said, you know, keep on the lookout. And, and here was the other thing. It had the 5.4 liter, but it had the updated 5.4 liter three valve. The original 5.4 liter three valves had problems with the, uh, the pins inside the, the, the cams, the, or the cam gears, which vary timing and everything. That engine is kind of cool. It doesn't have an EGR valve. It does it all through valve timing and everything. So it, it, it had some interesting things about it, but honestly, it, was, it felt gutless. It felt like it had power, it had torque, but it was like really heavy and the acceleration was more like, okay, here we go, here we go. And it, and it kept building and building speed, yes, but there was no seat of your pants acceleration that you would normally expect from a V8. Uh, I hear tell the five liters, the generation after that, that I think came out in 2011 or 12 or something like that, were way better. And in fact, everybody I talked to when I talked about this truck, they said, get a five liter. I'm like, okay, well, so one of the things I left them with and said, hey, you know, somebody turns in a five liter or something like that. They, they tried to make the numbers work on a new truck and it, that's twice as much. I mean, they want 40 grand for a brand new one of these things. I'm like, no, <laughs> no, not me. I mean, especially since I drive it off the lot, it's suddenly worth 35 or 30, <laughs> even less on a trade-in. Enough said. My used car buying experience. I hope that there's, you know, a little bit in there for you and I know that you've probably got something somewhere, some story of your own. Uh, feel free to share. There will be a link in the description to a discussion about this video if you want to share over there or, you know, comments below or whatever you feel. But I will say this, if you have automotive questions, I would ask that you head over to ericthecarguide.com for those. There's information there to, to help you with your automotive issues. So. Got them, go there. You wish to connect with me socially, I can be found on Google Plus, Facebook, Twitter, and now Instagram. Close each of my videos, be safe, have fun, stay dirty. I will see you next time. And you know what? If it doesn't feel right, it doesn't feel right. Catch you later.